Hello everyone, my name is Justin, and uh, I have seen a lot of uh, I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube that show uh, the basic disassembly and the reassembly of a uh, baby Desert Eagle, otherwise known as the Jericho 941. Uh, but I don't see any vi any videos about a detailed strip and uh, reassembly of a baby Desert Eagle, and that is the reason for this video tonight. So that's what I have. This one is a Full-size, 9mm Baby Desert Eagle from Israeli Weapon Industries. Um, it's one of my favorite pistols. It's very, very smooth when I shoot it. And uh, I've been practicing on how to uh, completely disassemble it, clean it, and put it back together. And uh, hopefully you all will be able to uh, uh, use this video to clean and, and uh, detail strip yours. Uh, so let's get started. First and foremost, want to make sure it's empty. Magazine drop. And... Nothing in the chamber, I'm nice and clean. All right, so basic disassembly. Obviously you know about the two dots. So two dots, line up your two dots. Push your separator and pull these apart. I'm gonna start with the lower because the lower is where everything happens. So. Obviously, we're going to take off the grips. Uh, mine is a flathead screwdriver. I've seen a couple of them that are slightly different. But mine's a flathead screwdriver. Okay. All right. The grips are off. The hammer is forward. Make sure that your hammer is forward. It makes things a little bit easier. This block that I have is basically just a wooden block with a bunch of holes in it. Um, I put a little bit of wax in the bottom of it uh, uh, because if I'm not working on this uh, towel where I have a little bit of grip, these will grip my surface no matter what it is. So uh, that's basically all it is. We will be using this because there are a couple of roll pins that I need to punch out. Um, keep in mind, the punches that I have are basically small screwdrivers. If you have access to actual punches, please use actual punches. These are not right for it, but I don't have the actual punches here. So these will work for the time being, but please use the actual punches. Um, what we have on the back side where, where we have this mainspring, we have a pin up here and we have a pin down here. It's important to have this, uh, to have the hammer up so that this makes it a little bit easier to take this mainspring out. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to leave this upper pin in here. Actually, I was wrong. What I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to push this pin all the way through. Now this, what it's actually for is just to make it easier for the magazine to go up in there and not snag anything behind here. Now... The next part that we're going to do is we're going to take out this lower piece. Hold your mainspring capture and push that other pin. Now it's important to keep that held, held down because that's the only way that you can keep, take this piece out. If you let it go up, you got to actually push it down in order to get this piece out. So now that we have that pin out, now we can take this out and your mainspring. And as you'll see up here on the hammer, I still have full function, but there's no tension. So, next, uh, next piece. This weapon itself is very, very, very similar to a CZ-75. And here's one of the similarities that is very, very similar to it. Right here on the sear, this whole piece here is one great big block. It's the sear. You have a spring. It's right here. Now this spring has a small lit a small ledge right here. You're actually going to take a small flathead screwdriver, lift that spring, set it on the ledge, push the pin out, and you'll see the pin has a groove in it. And that groove is actually off closer to one side than it is the other. That will come into part into uh uh, fruition later on. We'll we'll use that later on. After that, this whole sear assembly just comes right out. 
This piece in here, I am not going to take apart. I have taken it apart a number of times, and each time that spring in there is extremely hard to put back together the correct way. Um, what you actually have here is just is just a pivot point is really all it is that activates that sear. Um, clean it, uh, uh, put some lubricant on it, put some spray cleaner on it, and, and everything, and it should just be it, it should be just fine. Uh, but leave that alone if you're able to. If you feel like taking it apart, that's on you. But basically you have the spring and this inner piece is separate from this outer. But uh, you, you'll see what I'm talking about if, if uh, you ever take it apart. So now we have the hammer, the spur, and the trigger mechanism all in here in the lower. Let's take out the hammer. Now, I'm going to use my block set it on there and I have a bigger uh, uh, Phillips head screwdriver that I'm gonna take and just kind of give that a few knocks and the whole hammer comes out along with the spur and everything all right and Here's my roll pin. That's also one of the great things about these is that just like a roll of duct tape or a roll of masking tape, these holes will house all the pins so that you know exactly where they are all the time. Now, now we have that hammer out. Now let's take the trigger one out. I'm going to grab my smaller one and I'm going to do the same thing. Now, this has a bit of a trick to it and I will show you as soon as I take this pin out. So I'm just going to line that up. Okay, from here, I'm actually going to leave that in there. And here's the reason why. Here's my pen, by the way. Here's the reason why. This spring, this trigger spring right here, is actually still under pressure. And it's a little bit tricky to get out, or, or a little bit tricky to, to, to put back in. And I'll show you on the reassembly. But I found that the easiest way to not lose this is to actually turn... The slide upside down and pull it out well, and even then it kind of went everywhere here's my trigger and here's my spring my spring here's your trigger spring right there you'll notice it has a short side and a long side that will come into place later on as well basically there's only one other piece here that's actually worth taking apart and cleaning, and that is your magazine release right here. Now there's a couple pieces in here, and that's actually what this is for, but one of the things you want to do is that there is an access hole right here. That is part of the reassembly, believe it or not. However, there is a spring-loaded detent inside that hole, and you want to cover it. I have a small pair of pliers, I'm going to grab the top of that and just pull it right out. All right. Now, this, if this itself does come apart. I don't know if you can see it or not. But there's a small pin in the top of that one that keeps that all together. You actually have to compress it and push the pin out in order to take that spring out. Not recommended. However, if you do it, it's on you. From here... This, your magazine release, is now completely loose. And there's the detent. And where's my, where's my spring? My spring is actually kind of compressed in there, but here it comes. Here it is. All right. So there is the full disassembly of the Baby Desert Eagle frame. Okay. Now. Now that we have everything apart, let's put it all back together. Starting with my magazine release. I'm going to put my spring back in there. And I'm going to put my detent back in there. And I'm actually going to kind of shove all that in there all at the same time. Now one of the other great things about the Baby Desert Eagle pistol is that you, can, you actually have right now the chance to release or to switch this 
if it actually had the, the pieces to do that with the magazine, which it does. This is an ambidextrous magazine release. You can either have it on the left side of the pistol or the right side of the pistol. I'm right-handed, so I'm going to keep it the way it was. I'm going to slide that into place. Now, here's where that access hole comes into play. Notice the front, the front piece of this is actually pointed towards the front of the pistol. You're going to slide that down in there. All right. Now, on the magazine release, there is a small groove where this piece actually goes in. Okay, that piece is actually going to go in there, and that pin, that detent, is going to uh, press right up against this post. So, how do you get it in there? Well, I'm about to show you. Set that in there and set your post with the piece forward. On one motion, or at one time, you're going to press this down. And in that access hole, you want to push that detent, hold the other side, hold the other side of the magazine release, and push the detent. Okay. Now that I'm in, yeah, it can be a little bit tricky sometimes. Well, you can see it's, it's still got the spring in there, but I'm at least in the groove. So I'm gonna I'm gonna press my detent. I'm gonna try to find where that post connects down into it. There it goes. And once I know I have it, pull that out. Now that click told me that that detent is pressed in, and I have. The spring on that piece and my magazine has plenty of spring to it I'm gonna leave that alone now okay so from there let's work on the trigger you have your bow now on the inside of this on the back side of the frame you actually have a raised portion on each side the bow is gonna go underneath that raised portion and the trigger is going to go right down into its slot. Now, if you look through there, you're going to realize that that pin doesn't exactly line up. That's because it has tension from that magazine release. Now, what I have found is the easiest thing to do is to actually start. I'm actually going to start this roll pin into the trigger. And I'm explain why here in just a second. Go ahead and get her started. I'm gonna take it and give it a couple of taps to get her started. All I'm doing is lining up and giving it a couple of taps. Now that is actually exactly where I want it to be. You see how the roll pin is just slightly inside, inside that space in the trigger. This is where your trigger spring is going to come into play. Remember that, remember that short and long side? The long side is going to go in that groove right in front of the trigger. And the short side is going to go in the space right inside that trigger well. And the reason why you want just a little bit of that pin showing is because you're going to fit the actual spring itself inside the groove and hook it onto the roll pin. Let me show you how. You actually kind of want to start at the top, press down, and hook it onto the roll pin just like that. Okay, now you kind of want to be careful because you can still kind of take it out, but once you get it in there and once you get it hooked, give it a nice good whack. 
because once you get it, once you get that good whack, it doesn't matter if it doesn't go completely forward anymore because now that spring can't come out. So once you know that it's still in there, find yourself your punch and send it nice and flush in that setting. And now, now I have that now I have that spring back in my trigger. And you'll also notice the bow, it has spring this way and back and forth and it goes right underneath that groove there. So now that I've got that, I'm gonna work on my hammer. My spur goes down into the spur hole. And what I'm going to do, I'm gonna do almost the same thing. I'm gonna grab my roll pin and I'm at least gonna start it some. But because this one's a little bit blind, what I have to do, what I have to do is actually kind of guide it from the back side. So I'm gonna take another punch or something that'll fit into that back hole, find where the hammer is. All right, there's my hammer right there. So basically all I did is, all I'm doing right now is just kind of guiding in the general direction of that hammer for the roll pin. So, once I have that there, I know that my hammer is hinged right now. I got a good hinge. And once I have that, I can send it all the way through. Now my hammer is all set up, okay? Now, the back side right in front of the hammer, there are, there's a small groove here and a small groove here, okay? That is where your sear comes in. You have a groove right there that that sits right in. It actually kind of horseshoes in. What you have is you have that, a horseshoes down, and there's actually just a tut, just a little bit of pressure on it. Not too much, but just a little bit. And remember that groove in the sear pin that I was showing you before? Well, here's where it comes into play. You want that groove on the right side. And the reason for it is that's where this, that's where this spring gets housed. So you're going to slide that through. You're going to make sure it goes all the way through. All right. Now... Once you see the pin go through the sear, right where that spring gets housed, take your spring and set it down into the groove. Because what I'm listening for, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it or not, but what I'm gonna listen for as I'm pushing it through, hear that little click? That little click told me that that spring just went down into that groove. And now I have action on my sear, which is good news. The rest of it is actually just reverse. Now I have my main spring, go down through and cover my spur. And here's, here's where putting the magazine, I, I want to say a smoother, I guess if you want to call it that, you have the, you have your capture down here. Set your spring into capture. You want to have the open part forward. And what might be easier actually before you do this is to actually, well, you wouldn't be able to, would you? You'd have to actually push this down. You'd have to push the capture down and set your hook inside the capture. If it'll let me, come on. There it goes. All right, and take your upper pin. Now, you'll notice there's a there's actually a bigger pin and a smaller pin. Here's my smaller pin, here's my bigger pin. This upper one should be a smaller pin. My bigger pin won't fit in there, so there's really only one way to do it. So you're gonna find your loop, put it through there, 
and just slide your pin right in. It's a little bit loose, so be careful with it. Now, I don't know if you'd be able to look through this hole or not, but what you have, as I push this down, you'll actually kind of see the loop, the lower loop from the from the magazine smoother, and just slide your lower pin through the loop into the capture, and there she is. And now you have tension on the lower frame, which is good. All right, and then from there, all you have is, is the grips on the side. In part two, I'm going to be doing the upper slide and Again, there will be some things that I do and some things that I don't do, especially on that upper slide. There are some tools that I just don't have, but I will walk you through it as best as I can. And oh, apparently I didn't get it in there. There is the lower frame of a baby desert eagle. Now in my next video, like I said, I'm gonna be doing the upper slide. Make sure that you take a look at it and we'll, we'll get it back together.